All right, so you are in Project Lead the Way classes at College Park Middle, and you have completed all of your White Box Learning Research Assignments. That is the Four Forces and Google Doc, the Background Quiz, the Newton's Law with Google Doc, the Weight Quiz, the Lift Efficiency Worksheet, which is really a quiz, and the Pitch Quiz. Mark all of those assignments as done on Google Classroom when you're complete with them. And what do you do next? Well, now you're going to apply that knowledge because, again, Engineering is Applied Sciences. So now that you have the science, you're going to click on Engineering. The first time you use it, it might take a while to load, and that might even happen every day. That's okay. Once it's done loading, you'll see a blue screen. And this is where you're going to be designing your glider. And this will be based on what your client wants, as well as all of the research that you've done. So now it looks like there's nothing here, but if I want to look at the wing, I need to flip on the eyeball. That will bring up my wing. So I want to look at the fuselage and all of the other parts of my glider, I need to click on the eyeballs. But if I want to focus on just one part, like maybe the wing is giving me trouble, I can make all of the other pieces go away. If I want to change the wing, I'm going to click on the wrench or the tool, and I can change how offset the wing is by clicking on this number, changing it, and applying. And that's going to move it more or further um, front or back on the fuselage of the glider. I can change the shape of the wing from angled to curved. I can decide my sanding level. So a light sanding level means that you are going to barely sand the wood at all and leave most of the weight. Medium means you're going to take more of the wood off, and heavy means you're going to sand a lot of the weight off of your glider. So the sanding level will affect the weight of your glider. The dihedral type, that is talking about the angle that you can sort of see here on the wing. Um, I can say tip, di tip dihedral, and again I have to hit apply to make it stick. And that gives me more bends in the wing. Or I can go polyhedral. Um, I can affect the angles, and I can change the color. So, an important part of the engineering is to be a risk taker and play with it. If you don't like how something works, you can go back and change it. When you are all the way happy with your design, and I would definitely uh, suggest that you do more playing around with your design than I have done, you go to File, save, and the first time you're going to enter a concept name. Um, generally that should be your initials, mine would be SS, and then I do one for this is my first design. You can put your name, or you can put a school appropriate nickname. Inappropriate nicknames will be followed up with consequences, so please don't make that choice. Um, I can write notes about it, first design, only change wings, I don't have to. Then the first thing I want to do is save a working copy. No matter what, always save a working copy first. And it's a little weird. Then after that, I go File, Save Again, and this time I'm going to choose Save and Enter a Competition. But remember, if it's the very first time you're saving that design, always save a working copy first. Once I'm ready for the competition, and it said it saved my design down there, I click on the competition tab, and here's the field. So here is the plane. Here's my um, plane that I just made. And here is someone from class. Um, so you'll see I clicked on my name and then clicked contender one, and I clicked on the other name and the contender two. Um, it doesn't matter, you don't have to go first. Then I click start. There'll be some sound, so if you're on the laptops in class, please make sure that you turn the sound off. And I have computer audio turned off for this recording, so you can't hear it, but it's just some uh, some cheering and clapping that, you know, the audience is super excited for your competition. And then both planes fly and land. So, technically, they both flew for about a second. 
but you can see that contender two flew a little bit further. Um, but this one, it's all about time, and that's what your client wants. Your client wants a glider that stays in the air for a long period of time. And I can also see that both of these planes are out of spec. So there's two ways to tell what your specifications are. If you go back to research and you go to the design challenge, it tells you, oh, there we go. It tells you all of your specifications. The maximum for your wings, wing cords, horizontal stabilizers, vertical stabilizers, and your glider mass needs to be at least 7 grams. I can also come here to output and go to design specifications and click on that. And it will give me design specifications for my glider, not for my competitor's glider. But I can see here, my wingspan is two millimeters too long, and my true wing length is six millimeters too long, almost seven. So I will come back to engineering, make sure I'm still working on the same plan, or if I wanted to work on a different one, I could open another. You can see I have a couple designs going. And I can make adjustments to try to um, get my glider to first be in specification and then uh, beat all of the other classmates. Um, as the competition goes on, there will be a top 10, um, there will be different categories, and both periods of the aerospace technology do compete against each other. And I believe that's all you need to know about engineering um, the glider. Um, I do expect you to have multiple designs, at least two. Um, three or four is better because, again, you have more choices um, for this. And your goal is to get at least two seconds of flight. And um, more is always better with that. All right, thank you very much.